This podcast is sponsored by Finomat, finding the most suitable donor with the matching tool for the best teams. Hello, and welcome to the Fertility Conversations podcast. The goal of this podcast is to create more awareness about infertility and to provide support to people trying to conceive. Thank you for listening today, and we hope you will be encouraged. And now, here is your host, Ola. Welcome to another episode of the Fertility Conversations podcast. Today, we're joined by a lovely guest, Grace Ogunyi. She's a child and maternal health advocate with an unwavering passion for fertility. She's also a breastfeeding counselor who has participated in numerous outreaches to the less privileged. Currently, she's the executive uh, secretary rather, of the Bidini Igudalo Foundation, which is a prominent platform in the world of fertility providing support to women, men, children, and the vulnerable in the society. She joins us today to educate us about the Ibidini Godalu Foundation and all they do to educate, create awareness, and support couples trying to conceive. So welcome, Grace, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Wonderful. So to start off, we usually say, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, my name is Grace Oguni. I'm a sociologist and a child and maternal health advocate. Um, I love working with people and being of great service to humanity, particularly mothers and children. And gratefully, I've always found myself around the fields of maternal health. So I work with Ibidoni Godalo Foundation as the executive secretary. You know, so I, and as a breastfeeding counselor over the years, I've worked with breastfeeding mothers, counseling and giving relevant advice to them, you know, on the path to motherhood. As an executive secretary um, at Ibidoni Godalo Foundation, I manage programs, and coordinate all that we do with couples as regards fertility grants. Um, I also manage our relationships or the relationship amongst our couples and the fertility clinics, organize our outreach programs, advocacy programs, um, hospital visits, outreaches to underprivileged communities and the likes with my team. Under the leadership of our directors and our chairman. So... Ibidini Godalo Foundation is a, a prominent voice in the world of fertility. And um, it was founded by the late Mrs. Ibidini Igodalo, um, who, out of her pain, sought to be of service, be of help to couples that were trusting God for children or that are trusting God for children. Uh, having gone through IVF for about 11 times thereabouts um she she realized that there were some couples that needed perhaps just one opportunity to be parents you know and it was out of that during one of her birthdays that she thought of it that she was going to establish something as this to help bring succor to couples who were faced with the challenges of infertility and thankfully over the years the foundation has brought smiles and laughter to many families, many homes, and we are still doing this. Um, unfortunately, she died in the year 2020, June 14th, which was a very sad day. But we are grateful that, you know, her legacy lives on. And we're thankful for her husband, who is also the chairman of the foundation, that is Pastor Itwa Igudalo, who you know, champions the cause to ensure that, you know, her beautiful legacy lives on. So um, not only him, we have directors, um, we have, yeah, executive directors who who are also as passionate, you know, about running the course of the foundation. Some of them worked with her, maybe as our doctors, um, as, yes, as a personal counselors or as a senior friend. So it's such a good thing to have them also running the foundation. 
uh, in collaboration with her husband, that is Pastor Itwa Igudalo. So it's it's a credible foundation, and everything we do, you know, we do it knowing that we are accountable to people, because most times we get funds from people, and even you know, um, yeah. So we try to be objective, scientific, even in our selection processes, and in everything we do. And we are we are a faith based foundation, so. Um, we believe in God and we give all glory back to God, knowing that he's the ultimate giver of children. And we are so grateful to him that he has been blessing us with children. We recently um, had twins. Uh, that must be two weeks ago. Uh, yes, by a couple that have been trusting God for children for like 10 years. And then That's earlier amazing. this year as well. Thank you. Earlier this year as well, on the 1st of January, we welcomed another a baby girl yeah, to another family that had been trusting God for about 10 years. They had done their 10th anniversary, you know, so their baby came on the 1st of January, 2024. Oh, wow. We are so grateful. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And since um, Mrs. Ibijoni left, I think uh, to commemorate her passing, there was a 40 at 40 program which was initially her vision. She wanted to celebrate her 40th yeah. birthday, you know, mm -hmm. giving grants to 40 families. And sadly, we lost her. However, the program continued. So we did that in the year 2020, uh, 40 at 40. And in year 2021 as well, we did another 40 at 40. And then, so that's making 80 families. And then year 2022, we did 10 families. In year 2023, we did 10 families, you know. So all together, we could say we've done since her passing, we have given about 100 grants to wow. couples faced with the challenges of infertility. Thank That's you. That's amazing. And like, yeah. And um, so far, we have about 23 babies. Oh, yeah, wow. since 2020. What a blessing. Yeah, and still, we've had such a big, exactly. We've had triplets. We've had you know, a number set of twins mm. and um, single babies, boys, girls, and we are just grateful to yeah. be able to do it. Thank you so much for sharing. I want to first um, acknowledge uh, Pastor Mrs. Uh, Ibiduni Gudalu. Um, her legacy, of course, like you've highlighted, may her soul continue to rest in perfect peace. And may Amen. God continue to uphold her husband, her children, and her family. Amen. Um, like you highlighted, this is a wonderful uh, legacy that she's left behind. And for her to have gone through what she did in terms of mm -hmm. uh, numerous fertility treatments and waiting years mm -hmm. to hopefully try to conceive, and then to um, use that uh, pain or that experience to bring forth something so um, impactful mm. in other people's lives for generations mm. it's just um incredible um mm. you know it's 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 hard for anyone to go through infertility but then to choose to then support others and put in the funds the counseling to create a foundation to be able to support so, so many others is um I don't know. I don't know how many people could have done that. So uh, we just mm -hmm. want to acknowledge how wonderful uh, this foundation is and the fact that since her passing, like I said, her husband, uh, Pastor Godalo, and the directors as well have continued to um, move forward with her legacy and her vision in helping mm -hmm. couples um, just want to acknowledge that and thank you for all that you're doing and thank them all for all they're doing. And we pray that God will continue to make a way to ensure that you're able to bless more couples. I hope that in some time in the future, actually, yeah. these 23 children and many more that will be born, will, uh, there'll be a party celebrating them all and Amen. just um, talking about how they came to be. Um, mm. it, it is just uh, amazing to see that impact and their children as well and generations to come uh, everyone will mm. always talk about this I remember this so it's a lasting legacy 
So well done for helping to work as Thank part you. of the team to continue this. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. My pleasure. Yes, thank you. And you highlighted, of course, that you've uh, issued out a hundred grants, which is just again incredible. Because if anyone knows the price of one IVF treatment, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it is just mm -hmm. um, often out of reach for many. So to have blessed mm -hmm. one hundred couples is just amazing. Um, how do you, you. get? funding uh, are people supporting can people support and uh, is there a way to reach out to you as a foundation for anyone that might want to uh, donate or be part of this blessing to couples yeah thank you very much that's a very important question and um, so the the foundation has raised funds via her partners we have people who partner regularly with the foundation. Mm -hmm. Many of them give monthly, some give annually, you know, and some give at will, depending on, you know, um, when they're able to. Uh, right. We also do things such as crowdfunding. So our account details are out there on our pages and, you know, so we also partner with organizations. So some organizations that may want to do like their corporate social responsibilities and All because right. we run programs like outreaches um, to underprivileged communities, we go to hospitals, court city, you know, we go to schools. So they, uh, so we do other relevant things, you know, in line with mother and children. So there are companies, you know, that would want to, that partner with us based on this and um, some also partner with us based on the grants so that's how we basically get our fundings and um, so um, through our directors our chairman and friends friends of um, the chairman as well they have been so supportive friends of um, Mrs. Ibiduni Guzalo as well you know and family have been right. quite supportive so yes so we are always open to more people supporting. So basically it's just individual organizations, family and friends for now. We right. are hoping to get more grants or more support from international bodies and as many people, as many organizations as possible. Right. Okay. So I would like to use this opportunity quickly to thank everyone that has been supporting the yes. vision that has been given. I mean, IVF, paying for IVF is so expensive. So oh, that is. tells that, you know, it's not, you know, the support is not just chicken feed. Is you mm -hmm. know, they give huge support, you know, and we really want to thank them for doing this with us and for us, for the foundation. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you to everyone. Uh, so we'll put the details as well in the show notes for people to reach out for anyone that might be looking to uh, also support. So we thank everyone that has been supporting so far and may God continue to provide and for others that Amen. also want to support. Yeah. Amen. So for people that are seeking the fertility grants uh, that want to be a part of the future 10 or 20 or 40 that you um, choose to be a part of this, uh, to be issued the grant, how can they um, get more information and apply for the grant. Okay. So we usually advise that people follow us on all our social media platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, visit our website regularly. That's how they get more information about the things that we do. Um, right. if we also put out information um, in the newspaper, on the TV. However, you know, you can always go to our social media platforms. You see the information there. So, uh, the facility, uh, we we usually have a registration portal opening, which is always or usually around July nineteenth, which is the founder's birthday. So the mm -hmm. portal is usually opened on the nineteenth. Although we are considering bringing it to June fourteenth, which is her memorial day. That is the day she passed on. So between June and July, the portal will be open. Between June 14th and July 19th, 
the portal will be open and may run through to the end of July. Okay. So when the portal is on, uh, you visit our websites or Facebook and Instagram. The link will always be on our bio. The link will be, you know, somewhere visible for everyone to see. Just click on the link and register. The registration is very important. Uh, it is from, you know, the registration that we are able to tell the, you know, the number of people or what the next things to do. The people will be called for interview. So you may not be called for interview if you do not register. So it's from that portal link that people register. Yes, the, the link can be shared via WhatsApp and any other um, um, available media, but that registration is very important. Yes, so between June and July, we can have people register. Okay. So we'll put your details as well for the social media platform so people can follow you and then be updated, but of course also look out in June and July for yes. when the portal will be opened. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And what are some of the requirements? Just, I mean, I know you cannot share all of it, but just some some requirements of that people that can qualify. Uh, can mm. they be single? Um, do they have like maybe one kid and one another? Or what are some of the requirements to qualify? Okay. Okay. So for the benefit, because it's basically for the benefits of couples that are trusting God for children. Mm -hmm. uh, so usually it's for couples that have no children at right. all. Yes. Okay. And it's not for single, uh, for, mm -hmm. for people who are unmarried. Uh, not because we are being biased, but because there are people who are married and, you know, they have been through this, uh, wanting to have children. So we kind of consider them, you know, they are their desire of priority. And right. then another thing is the age. So some things change from year to year. You know, we try to be adverse with the World Health Organization and all that. So the age of the woman matters. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, so it changes from year to year. But I think, and then the years of marriage as well. So right. you're married for one year. You may not be picked two years. You may not be picked. I think from four years. It used to be from five years and above, but from last year we did from four years and above. So this right. year it's likely to be like that. So from four years and above, and then we also like to, you know, be sure that uh, the couple is working at least one person, at least you right. know, is financial in the family because IVF is expensive. Yeah. And, you know, there comes a time where you must have gone through all the treatment, fertility treatments, and then pregnancy comes. You want to be sure that you're able to also take care of the child when the yeah. child comes. Because once the child is born, the child is yours. The child bears your name, you know. Right. It, you, you, we have to be sure that, we have to ensure that, you know, basic things that a child needs can be provided for by the parents. So, yeah, so those are basically... The criteria for now there are other criteria right. yeah such as health um but that would be according to so usually they are screened mm -hmm. um there's a process to that you register um there's an automatic screening by the system based on the information you give and then uh, then they are called for the interview after the interview um they are sent to uh partner clinics for tests uh, mm -hmm. That is so for every stage that they, they pass through successfully, uh, they are sent to the partner clinics for tests. After tests, um, then the clinics give us their list of, you know, most probable um, couples or patients for the IVF treatments. Right. Okay. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And of course, some people go on your uh, website as well and register they will see more of the any other yeah. additional requirements yeah. that may be needed. Yeah. Okay. And the people need to live in Nigeria to access the grant? Mm, for now, we are, we, we are open to Nigerians for now. Okay. We are hoping that in future we would even do as many as possible. But for the sake of 
you know, the structure in place, what we have been working with, the system that is working for us, mm-hmm. we'll just say that, you know, we'll just like our couples to be available when it is time. Um, so we do the, for those that are in Lagos, they come to our office for the interview. We send them to our partner clinics, you know, to run checks on them and all that. Uh, so if you are not available for us, we may not be able to do all that. So we've had people that are abroad and say, oh, they'll be coming uh, maybe when they're selected right. for interview, you know, and we see we could we could run the interview, you know, it could be a virtual interview. And then, but what, what makes them qualify, one of the criteria that makes them qualify would also be that they will be available Right. For you know to run the medical checks, if they are not available, then the slots may be given to other persons that are available. So for for the for Nigeria, we just it just be available for us. We can always do virtual interview for those that are not within reach. However, after that interview phase, if they scale through to the next phase, the next phase would be the medical screening phase where they go run their preliminary tests. So right. the availability would be very important. So we have people come, you know, all the way from the east, north, Abuja, Undo states, or your states, you know, mm-hmm. they come to Lagos to do all that. So availability is the most important thing here. Right. And it needs to be Nigerians. You need to be Nigerians for right. now. Okay. All right. Thank you for clarifying that. And uh Another question that people often have is that what type of fertility treatments does the grant cover? Like, would you cover surrogacy, uh, adoption, um, mm. or is there specific treatments that you cover? Okay, so for the fertility treatment, basically we do IVF mm-hmm. and IUI. Um, IUI, that is uh, intra uterine insemination mm-hmm. we also do some adoption services but that must be when the couples have done all you know they have explored all the other options available and maybe they're unable to then we can put them up for adoption it's another process entirely so it's not directly um, the connected to the grant. Okay. Yes, but the grant is just IVF and IUI. The adoption is uh, a separate um, process entirely. Yes. Okay. So but if people want to, sorry, go ahead. I said, but we offer we offer such assistance. Okay. Yes. So if people want to adopt and just looking for kind of support or uh, guidance, they can reach out to you for that. Yes, so they can reach out to us. Okay. Yes, Great. And then for the fertility treatments, the IU and IVF, do you cover surrogacy as of now or? Okay, for now, we don't do anything about surrogacy. And okay. the founder as well didn't touch on that while she was here. Uh, that's not to say that because of that, no. But for now, we don't do surrogacy because it requires a whole lot of other, you know, mm-hmm. things that are not uh, very direct. And so for now, we just base, you know, we just focus on IVF and IUI. Okay. So we pray that God will continue to provide and support. And hopefully in the future, you can also uh, support people that might be exploring that option. Amen. Um, amen. Uh, another question, which is very important, I think is very important for people to know, is that is the grant paid to people? So for example, if they're selected, did they get the money paid to them? Or do you work with the clinic specifically and then the grant is paid to the clinic to then offer the treatment? Okay. <laughs> that is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't pay the grants to people. Mm-hmm. You know, they have the, the form, they have the um, the grants form with them, agreement, but we pay the money to the clinics. So we we work directly with the clinics. We partner with the clinics. So we also serve as the middleman between the clinics and our couples. So we pay the clinics. Our couples go to the clinics as patients and are treated by our clinics on our bill. So we pay the clinics directly. The people have no 
direct dealings with finance and they really okay. have no business with it. Yeah, so we take that burden off them entirely. Okay, good to know. Really important. Yes. Thank you for sharing. And for all mm-hmm. that you shared in terms of the Bikinui Gudalo um, Foundation and how people can mm-hmm. apply as well, it's very important because again, mm-hmm. like we said, infertility um, treatments are very expensive. So knowing that there is some kind of support being provided in Nigeria is very important for lots of couples. Um, mm-hmm. So of course, again, another thing that we are noticing is that infertility is rising across the globe and even in Nigeria as well, it is rising. Um, mm-hmm. In your opinion, what are some of the things that we can do in our society to create awareness about infertility mm-hmm. and to also um, encourage people to be less judgmental about mm. people opting to go for fertility treatments as they pass through mm. parenthood? Mm. Thank you. That's a very good question. Uh, with the rising cases of infertility globally, uh, we cannot relegate the place of um, awareness, enlightenment, you know, and this cuts across, you know, just family it's cut across neighborhoods, communities, because we realize that yeah, many people are judgmental because they do not know, because they they you know some have not even felt that pain, even though we don't pray that they feel the pain before they get to know, but they don't know. Maybe they they don't have persons that have done IVFs or even maybe the persons around them that may have done it may have hidden it from them. So we need that awareness to you know to spread and. It cuts across different ages, different strata of society. And that is why even as a foundation, we are taking it upon ourselves to also educate young minds about their reproductive health. You right. know, so we go to secondary schools to talk to them about right. infertility. Yes, we um like this is March, International Women's Month. Uh usually that's when we go around schools to talk to you know, young girls about their reproductive health. And thankfully this year, uh inspire inclusion. Yes. We are also considering we've also we've always wanted to do something with the boys, but this is such a yes. good time. Mm-hmm. Doing, yeah. So this year we are going for a mixed school and we're also going for a single sex male school. That, that a male school. That's his oh, King's done. College. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So to talk to them about their reproductive health, infertility is a two way street. It's not just for the girls alone to bear the burden of infertility. Guys also need to know there are certain things, certain hygiene habits they should have. You know, there are certain information they should know yes. as much as they, they may be young. Um, they are atten- many of them in secondary school, school are attaining puberty. Some don't know how to count their ovulation, you know, and their menstruation. So these are the information we bring to them. And even for guys, what to do, knowing that most um, infertility cases that are related to their um, tubal blockage are caused by, um, you know, diseases Infection, which... Yeah. Um, yeah, which can be prevented. So bringing this information to them would help them stay in good shape and do the thing, do things rightly, you know, as they grow. So that when they, you know, when they get to the age where they are, they need children. Hopefully, all this would guide that they wouldn't have delays in childbearing. Not only are we taking it to secondary school, we are also planning to take it to the youth and that is during yes, NYC. Like, yes, yes. That'd so be that is amazing, wonderful. Yeah. So that is the latest now. We are hoping to reach out to um youths during their orientation camp to create awareness also to young minds uh, you know that are serving their nation. Yes. So and then we also have like a parents and waiting conference where we have our gynecologists, doctors, medical professionals come talk on the reproductive health issues and, you know, many other things that couple need to know. So on our part, we are creating awareness, we are giving grants, we are talking about it on our social media pages. And uh, we also hope that, you know, to shed the weight of ignorance from yes. people and ensuring that yes they get to know more about it some people you know 
you realize that some people want IVF, but when you tell them there's a possibility of them using donor eggs, they'll say, what is that? They, they, so many people don't even know about yeah. the possibility of donor eggs, the possibility of donor sperm. You know, that's why all this awareness uh, is being created. And uh, so we try to ensure that we bring this information to people. Even on our social media pages, we have some lectures, you know, not so broad, but in a little way, we talk about IVF, we talk about PCOS, we talk about endometriosis, you know, and every other issue, fibroid, and things that... Um, That's a lot. Yeah, that people may be dealing with. We just want to yeah. push the information out there. And we are also open. So people come to us. If you have questions, you come to us. The ones we cannot answer directly because we are not medical doctors. We have doctors that we work with. We can always, you know, refer you. So uh, some of our partner clinics are doctors to see you or to talk to you. Amazing. I love everything you said, you know. So I was listening and just nodding and saying, yes, this is exactly what we need. So yeah. thank you for all that you're doing, for choosing to educate uh, younger generation and so they're better prepared for their fertility and I love the fact that you also highlighted that some people don't even know what donor eggs or donor sperm is so even yeah. that's part of your education letting people mm-hmm. understand that there are different paths to parenthood there is no one way uh mm. it's not just there you know so if you meet a friend that was adopted that's fine if you meet a friend that was born through mm-hmm. surrogacy that's fine you know mm-hmm. there's a new friend that was born through donor sperm or uh embryo donation that's fine as well mm-hmm. so we this awareness is important and hopefully for the younger generation, because you're starting it so early with them, the stigma yeah. would hopefully reduce, right? Because then they start mm-hmm. to realize that like, it's a, it's not a big deal. It's just mm-hmm. a different way to have a child mm-hmm. or to have children. Mm-hmm. So thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, thank you. And of course, going to schools and going to universities and speaking to uh, uh, students currently doing the NYSC, that's, that's really incredible. Uh, also welcome and hopefully that we keep on having these conversations and letting people know the importance of supporting individuals and couples around them as well that are uh, trying to conceive. So thank you for yeah. all that you're doing. Thank you. My pleasure. You shared so much today, uh, Grace, and as a wrap up, I just wonder any words of encouragement that you'd like to share for anyone or couple mm. currently trying to conceive. Hmm. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, so to couples that are trying to conceive, uh, I just want to say um, you're almost there. Um, you know, many people here, relax, relax, hold on. You know, it's quite tough. However, I want you to know you're not alone. You're not alone. There are many others who are facing this. However, your time comes quickly. And I pray for them that everything that they have to do, you know, before the children comes, all the information they need that God will make it available to them because I realize that some couples are waiting for many years and they should have maybe waited for like one year or two years or they, their waiting period should have been shorter, but basically mm-hmm. because they didn't get all the information. So I advise them to read, advise them to be open to suggestions, I advise them to take um, their medical information seriously um, some people will say, no, God would do it. Yes, God would do it. But if the doctor is advising you to try donor eggs, okay, so let's prayerfully do that. If the doctor is advising you to try donor sperm, maybe in the case of azospermia, then prayerfully consider it. Be open to change. Be open to information. And I pray that very soon, so, some people have even done all, you know, and this thing, this, children are not coming but i just want them to know that um, god sees you and in due season he will visit you and i also want them to know that when that joy comes you know it's to bring so much glory to you and to your family and of course to the name of god such that you you know the years of pain will be forgotten so i'm trusting god for these families and i pray that sooner than you expect 
your joy will come. Your joy will come. And I know that God will come through for you. You are not alone and you will never be alone. Very soon you'll hear the cry of a baby in your homes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. For being here. That was so wonderful. Thank you for, for wrapping it up with a prayer. Really important. Um, thank you. To, thank you so much for being here today and for sharing all that you have and for all that you're doing to raise awareness, to support individuals and couples, to uh, helping people to know that they're not alone and that uh, there is hope and there is support. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much to all the uh, to the chairman of the Ibidini Gudalu Foundation, Pastor Itoi Gudalu, through all the directors, to all the people that have been supporting you all through the mm -hmm. years. We're so thankful. Mm -hmm. We pray that God will continue to support and provide and inspire and open up more mm -hmm. ideas on how you can reach more people. Uh, we pray mm -hmm. for strength all through. And that, uh, you know, in the near future, we'll keep on, uh, like I said earlier at the beginning, we want to, see this party celebrating all the children that have yeah. been this foundation <laughs> we'll look uh, to it. <laughs> it's just been such some a blessing them, yeah some of them usually come for appearance and we in conference oh, however wow. we are looking forward yeah they come we are looking forward to a day where we really have them you know yes. all the children of the foundation you know it to be such a great one thank yes, you for saying that to see. yes yes thank you um, so much for being here Thank you to Thank Pastor Ito Gudalu and to mm -hmm. everyone who has continued to support you. And may God continue to promote uh, this foundation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you so much. And we look forward to again mm -hmm. having you in the near future uh, to mm -hmm. speak on about the more things and more people that you have reached and how we can mm -hmm. support you as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I look forward to it as well. Thanks for joining us this week on the Fertility Conversations podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give us a five-star rating and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Fertility Conversations. If there are any topics you would like to have discussed, please send an email to fertilityconversations at gmail.com. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode. Thank you again for listening. Take care of yourself and do stay hopeful.